Hey everyone, Jamal here with Review Me, and we are here with Jennifer Turner for the second session of the UK Photography Industry Explain. Uh, say hi, Jennifer. Hi, good evening, everyone. So today's session is gonna be all about getting your tools in place, social media, websites, uh, marketing, all your different efforts and uh, methods to you know outreach and make sure your brand's intact. Um, so save your questions to the end. She has a slide deck that she'll um, go over and you can follow that as well as we'll be jumping back and forth between her speaking and the, and the slides. Um, so without further ado, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, so as of last week, we went through a really, well, I was gonna say quite, but quite in depth overview of the um, UK industry. And now we're gonna get a lot more practical. So. I'm going to try and keep everything short because I think this is something that you're going to have loads of questions on in terms of your own websites and all that sort of thing. So um, we'll I'll just keep it short and then make a note of your questions and then Jamal can go for, through them with us at the end. Um, so I've made a slideshow um, for today just so to keep me on track and also so that we make sure that we go through everything. Um, so this is the the title that we came up with today getting your tools in place so when we say business skills are non-negotiable you must have them to succeed that makes me feel scared and i've got a new company <laughs> and, um, so i always think that that will feel quite daunting to all of you guys listening too um but one of the things that we have to remember or is that as a photographer we are photographers um which can seem like a leisure business and lots of people go oh you're a photographer that's lovely um which it is lovely and it's why we all do it but you have to remember that you are a business um first and foremost so that's how you're trying to make your income and that's what we need to sort of focus on um so today we're just going to go through the different elements of what that entails and we're going to ignore the financial stuff and boring stuff um but just sort of how to keep on top of your game and what are your sort of different elements of your business um that we can work on or maybe give a bit of insight into to get going um so i put some pictures in here today for you um so what do businesses need to succeed i have read so many um <laughs> so many sort of cheesy how to make your business work type books um, and they're fantastic to a certain level but you have to take the bits that you want to take and the bits that you don't want to take um, and make them relevant to you so my sort of synopsis of what's relevant to you guys as photographers are here really um, the few things that I've pulled out is confidence clarity fearless attitude and sense of leadership um, so to go through them confidence is such a word that we all throw about so lot so much of the time um, basically you need to be confident at delivering yourself as a photographer and it's really hard because I get it all the time people go oh are you busy and you go yeah yeah we're really busy and they go that's amazing and you and actually the truth of the matter is as a photographer and as an agent we are always going to be busy um because whether we're pitching or we're shooting and that's the that's how it works um so you kind of have to be confident at talking about yourself selling yourself and also within your work as well you've chosen a route of photography that you've gone down um, and uh, sometimes you get people tending to try and do every single type of photography or um or going right okay this is my portfolio of landscapes but this sits on another page to my wedding photography and i have wedding photography here and then actually i have my print sales over here and i think that can be really um misleading for clients and we that shows to me a lack of confidence so it's just something to be aware of on all different levels um then clarity is clarity of your product so again this goes back to your style as a photographer do you understand who you are um as a photographer what your what type type of work you're trying to get 
who your client is because if you don't understand who your client is then the chances are that your client isn't going to remember you as a photographer to use because there's a sort of um, a gap that you need to fill in terms of that and that comes into your branding and sort of your personal brand and that sort of thing. Um, fearless attitude is so easy to say and then harder to have um, We everyone says this in every single kind of photography um, book that you read or seminar that you watch and we, the guys that review me have done a few different things now and I've watched some of them and this other agents talk about exactly the same thing is that you have to be able to take the knockback so when you don't get a job try not to take it personally um, that's really hard to say but at the same time I just think in terms of how would you say it when we get knocked back it's always going to be personal but at the same time you have to learn from those situations so why is it that you didn't get the job is it because it went to illustration and you can't control that or is it because um you did the treatment in a really rushed manner and you know that actually you only put 50 percent effort in and another photographer put 150 percent effort in and that's why they got the job over you or is it just something that you can't control which the majority of time it is stuff that you can't control when you're pitching against other people you have you don't know who the other two photographers are if there's three photographers up for it the one of the photographers might have shot all of the campaigns up to this point and um and you're sort of fighting a losing battle um and then and i suppose within that as well before i go on to leadership is don't be afraid to do anything wrong um i talk to lots of photographers who are sort of quite established in their careers and i'm always interested in what they've done to get to that point and one photographer um who I've worked with says you know the most important thing is doing stuff wrong because it's only by doing things wrong that you learn how you want to light something or what models you prefer to work with or you know whether you don't like that stylist that you just engaged in that great big job or that sort of thing so you know it's by doing things wrong that you develop yourself and get better um, and then sense of leadership comes back onto what I was just mentioning about is the team. Um, so when a when a commercial client is hiring you as a photographer, they are giving you a large budget of money that you are then going away and creating um, some beautiful work for them or some effective work and they need to feel a trust in you that you're able to do that, um, which is one thing. But also, when you've got a team of maybe two people or 10 people or 20 people working underneath you, you're the um, person who is creating the final piece. So you are the leader in that situation. Um, and you have to believe that in yourself as well so that other people believe it in you. Um, so, oh, this is, <laughs> this is um, one of those very cheesy things I was telling you about. Um, so when we talk about clarity of product like who is it you are as a photographer um it's really i you know you often look at sort of different things and people are going oh yeah i was the person who invented how to do this and come up with that product or what have you and um that's a little bit difficult so we all there's so many photographers in the world that we can't reinvent how to photograph and i can remember reading this thing by richard branson where he said um i'm not gonna reinvent how to fly a plane i'm just gonna make sure that i'm the best person um who i've got the best company that you can fly the fly with and i couldn't find exactly the quote but i put that one in there for you um because it always stuck in my mind because i just thought well that's really true and i've done that with my agency and well i hope that's what i'm doing with my agency and i just gone right i'm not reinventing how to represent photographers i'm just going to be really good at it and um, we'll hope that that way it is so um so yeah that's just in there for you um, so going through onto the practical pieces, um, so fundamentals, I think it breaks down into two different areas as a photographer. You have your work, the 
images that you're re reproducing and the how you're making them. Um, now, that's one part of being a photographer and some people, there's sort of different and different people do different things and this is why I say here that the balance is crucial because you have the work and the creation of your images and then you have how you're showing that work um, if you don't show that work to anyone in the right way or the work isn't seen then there's no point in making the images in the first place because they'll just sit there in the attic and it's that whole um, thing about if a tree falls down um, and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And that's why the balance is so important to be creating fantastic work, but showing it in the right places so that people are able to pick it up and, and reward you for that, whether that's in sort of press or whether it's in commissions or, you know, that, that's really crucial. Um, and it's something that I'm often talking to photographers about in terms of balance. Um, I have a photographer that I work with who is really into Instagram and it's fantastic that he's into Instagram but sometimes when I'm talking to him and saying what have you been doing this week all the things he's telling me about is the fact that he's been doing stuff on Instagram working out how to get more followers and all that sort of thing and I sit there going okay that's great but what about the development of your personal projects or what about meeting people actually in real life not just on social media so that's why we say the balance is really crucial um, and then on the other side is if you're shooting in the studio for every day of the week but then you've done nothing in terms of meeting people or trying to connect with different people or getting your work out there and how we're talking about um, that is again not not it's sort of going the other way you're sort of tipping the balance um but then saying that you can it's okay to you know you might spend one month completely immersed in a project and then you might spend one month completely immersed in showing people that work so it's just as long as you know that you're doing a bit of everything will um be good so we'll go through um now in a little bit more detail um in terms of the work and things that you should take on board and um, and try and sort of identify in yourself. So when you're trying to identify yourself as a photographer, it's really difficult for me because I'm talking to you and not knowing what photographers I'm talking to, who we've got on the um, panel. So I don't know whether we've got still life photographers or we've got landscape photographers or lifestyle photographers. Um, so it's always a bit difficult to know where to pitch this, but this genre of photography um, is really key to know whereabouts you sit, but also not to pigeonhole yourself, because that's one of the things that's a really hard balance. Um, and something that I think an agent can really help with, because they're the second pair of eyes to say, it's okay to shoot still life and portraiture and call yourself a still life and portraiture photographer. Um, there are other agents who might go, no, 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 you have to shoot just still life. Um, we had recently, um, I went into an agency and one of my photographers does shoot still life and portraiture and she shoots some landscape too, but um, we don't show as much of that. And the creatives all went, this is amazing because most photographers, we sit down and we, they only do still life and we're looking at it and going, Oh, we need someone who can shoot both the bottle and the person set next to the bottle and how and it's always quite they said it's always quite difficult to try and find that um so that's why i've kind of gone into different genres here so we've got still life portrait landscape and then that's why i put elegant and graphic because you know if you've got a visual style that pulls all of your work together then you don't need to pigeonhole hold, pigeonhole yourself into those different places but saying that you have to have something that ties you together, otherwise people won't understand you um, in terms of how to remember you. And that's, the, that's the key thing as a photographer is making sure that the commissioner or the agent or the um, magazine or anyone, they remember you as a photographer. Um, and once you can kind of work out who, who you are, 
um, then that will help them understand it. So going through, have you worked out a consistent style? So like I was saying, is it that you shoot um, with colored lenses or is it because is it because you shoot with natural light or is it that you shoot um technical items with the most um, amazing detail and so what is it that is good about your work um and with your with your style one thing i always try and say to people who are trying to develop that is to look at each one of your images and pick out the one the stuff that you love most about your work so look at the work that you've got there and say which one which bits do i love um or what's been most successful and once i look at this image and what is the most successful bit about this okay that and what is the least successful thing okay i didn't like the um stylist that i worked with or you know I, the background that i used didn't react to the way that i wanted it to when i put the light on it or you know and then you just take the most successful bits and move forward and that's really it seems simple to say but i think we forget sometimes how to review ourselves and push ourselves forward um now this point about the personality coming through the portfolio um i put this in here because it only dawned on me recently actually and it's such a simple thing i met a friend who i hadn't met seen for about three years and he was an assistant when um i last saw him and he's recently got together his portfolio and he's a really fantastic um really nice guy and just generally very he's got a really strong character very bubbly and just you know he's in the room um now he showed me his portfolio and I was so disappointed because I was just like, well, this isn't your portfolio. Like, I don't know whose portfolio this is, but this isn't your portfolio. And um, he, he just hadn't allowed himself to come into his work. And I think that probably comes with confidence and sort of and not loosening up, but I think there is that fear of doing things wrong, like we were talking about before. Um, make sure that your work feels like you um, and that you love what you're making. And I think um, it'd be interesting to go away and have a look at your work and go, is my personality coming through my portfolio? Does it show who I am? Um, and I look at my website and my branding for Ren, and it completely. Um, it completely reflects me and I had a really interesting design team work on that with me and they took all the different parts of my personality and different stories that I told them and all that sort of stuff and then they built that into it and then told me about it afterwards it was a lovely experience but you know it's about sort of looking at your work and going right what is what about my work can I identify with um so within this and trying to work out what um what sort of most successful within your work is what is most important to you too so if you're um if you're really um concerned with the technical sides of the work in terms of making your um i don't know say you're taking a photograph of a laptop for a client and you want to make sure the gloss comes out and the um and the shine and all that sort of thing then you know that's the bit that you really really have to work on and try and look at all the different things that you need to look at and compare yourself to other different items where you go actually i love how the beauty photographers are photographing compact mirrors and i want to now look at all the beauty photographers that i love and go about, okay how do they make that stand out as well as that and what can i bring into my work that can do that when i'm photographing a laptop and so that sort of thing um and then if it's your your style as an artist in terms of you're not so concerned with the technical thing but you want to create a feeling and a mood within your image then again work on that um element and lots of people cross over both of those things and it's just something that i bring up um from time to time because i do think it's quite interesting when you get to talk to photographers on a one-on-one -on -one basis sort of pulling those bits out um that one of the um examples i wrote down to tell you about actually was um 
I once had a shoot to shoot for Motorola um, and we had to make a pair of sunglasses explode. Um, now that seems really straightforward, but sunglasses are actually made not to break. So I was really lucky to be working with a photographer that I would call a photographer who's used more like a tool because he's just good at working out all the technical exercises, talking to all the people who to go like, okay, how do we do this? And what can we do to make sure that we can actually get our sunglasses to shatter? Um, and if I'd been working with a different photographer um, who wasn't so sort of interested in terms of all the technical items, then that would have been a very difficult, um, not difficult, different shoot. That's a <laughs> Freudian slip there, different shoot. Um, so then going back onto that, it's um, talking about your team. So um, if you, well, as you're working through all these things, you should be looking at it and going like, okay, what are the elements I need to improve and who can help me improve those things? Because as a photographer, you're not just a person on your own. Um, and that's really important to work on it. Going back to that leadership thing is, if you're really struggling to get to a point of something, you need to work out who the person is that can help you with that. So if it's, um, oh, I'm trying to think of something. So I've got a photographer who likes to shoot on film, but he needs to be shooting digitally. And his retouching ability to get it looking like his film just isn't quite there. So I'm saying to him, well, find yourself a retoucher, find someone that you enjoy talking to, enjoy working with and make that happen um, so that they can show you this is how you can do that and that sort of thing. And then that is a good relationship for the retoucher too, because as soon as that photographer gets um, commercial work, he'll then be saying to that retoucher, oh, you know how you showed me how we can do this? Let's do it now, let's do it for this project. Um, and that's just one example, you know, if you're um, shooting in a studio and you can't think of what to shoot and what the props are that you want to shoot and you're lacking inspiration, um, go and talk to a stylist or a home economist or um, or anyone who you know has a business who wants stuff sh shooting and that stuff can just help spark ideas, talking to people and working with people. Um, will really help because being a photographer is quite isolating if you're just sat at home looking at the computer and working on your images alone. So um, then I have this last note saying recognising where you need to develop but I think that we've just gone through that all here is that's the thing about not being afraid um, to just look at yourself and work on it and if you find it hard to look at your work and um, self-review then there's all you know you should ask friends it's really difficult asking friends you want to ask friends who are in the industry um to kind of give you some tips on where they might see some areas of development um then you've got the things like on review me where you can do one-on-one -on -one, um tutorials with people or send one image or send a website um where you know you can get professionals to look at things for you um one of the things that I always like to say to people when you're talking to other people and asking for advice and actually it's really important when you're listening to me here is that it's just advice and people come with their own experiences and own sort of personal tastes so if you're um if you're sort of listening to me or listening to anyone else who's looking at work and just going I don't agree with them that then that's fine it's you don't have to agree with people all the time um so moving on, um, so we've sort of gone through a lot of this. What is it that you need to develop in yourself? So the um, one thing I haven't talked about already is your network. So talking about your team, but that can also be the people that you know in terms of sending your work to them. Um, we're going to go on to this in a second, actually, because someone had a question about it last week is, who do you actually show your work to once you um, once you do shoot? Sort of how do you identify your clients and that sort of thing. So if you're one of the things you might need to develop in yourself is your network, and that can be as much as going to exhibition openings or um, local lectures or 
the different sort of groups where photographers get together and like I do a lot of it actually myself I go to different events in London where we have um, events where the agents get together or the production companies or the fashion houses and um, and I'm constantly going to that because I think it's interesting to hear what other people are saying um, so technical ability we talked about style we talked about um, the next steps oh okay so we talked about this research thing just a little bit um, but research is really, really key. Um, some, there are some photographers who are known for sort of mimicking other photographers or other artwork. And I don't mean, when I say look at other people's work, I don't mean copy their composition or copy their idea, but in terms of technical things, or it's okay to do that. So um, we've been working on a project recently where the photographer noticed another photographer who had done the skin really beautifully on a fashion fashion campaign and um and then they had the skin against this really beautiful sort of soft lime um green in the background and the photographer just went I love how those two colors work you know that's a color palette that I want to bring into something that I'm doing so he just brought that in so that's a research element and it's those sort of little things looking at everything around you and seeing what can inspire you um, and then Pinterest as a tool, um, I use this as um, with all my photographers and when I started it they were all a bit like oh what are you doing that for um, but we've all started using it, it's a fantastic thing to use and we, we are visual um, creatives in terms of our industry is completely visual and what Pinterest does for us is it allows us to remember things in a visual way. So one thing that I have with all my photographers is we have a separate Pinterest page per photographer and within that page anything that I see that I think might be relevant to that photographer I pin it to it and we have that as in sort of cultural relevances like relevant things so whether I see a photographer they might be interested in or whether that is um their like a brand that they've seen that we've seen that we go right okay that will um that'd be good to remember or we'd like to shoot for them so make sure that you're using um pinterest as a way of going right okay reference that reference that um and i think that that will really help so i'm just rushing forward because i'm only halfway through and i need to um talk to you about some more things um so your work and identifying trends um we actually talked about this a little bit last week in terms of identifying trends it's important to know what people are wanting to commission um, and how you can play within that. Um, but I put a picture here of a sheep <laughs> um, because I also believe don't be um, a sheep. <laughs> you know, you, you should be making the trends, not necessarily following them. So just because someone's shooting, everyone's shooting something against a coloured background, then it doesn't mean that you have to do that. Um, but what it does mean is that if the industry is looking for, you know, photographers who can sh shoot in a more multimedia platform or um, be more flexible in terms of rates or just, you know, be, I'm, I'm finding people are looking for photographers who are quite confident in terms of their production ability. You know, that is... And I see that being the next sort of industry trend in terms of adding a little bit more production value into things. It's just watching those trends and trying to stay on top of them, um, but not necessarily following them. So now on to how to show your work. So this is really um, this is really crucial because your work could be the most beautiful work in the world, and if you're not showing it, then people aren't seeing it. Um, so just to go through, most people are viewing work on websites now. Um, I did some time art buying and I think I only got the portfolios actually into the agency for a job once and they were too heavy to carry around the agency to show to everyone so I didn't bother again and we just always, always look at websites. Um, so it is really key to make sure that your website is representing the way that you want to be represented. So. You know, one I've just pulled out a few things here to discuss, but 
the layout of your website is really important. Is it clear what you're doing? Can people actually see your images? Um, that's why I've put image size up there because it's. I quite like having thumbnails on a website so that you can have an overview of someone's work very quickly. But I also want to be able to get in there and see it really big um, and make sure that, you know, when I'm looking at a picture, there's like a certain quality of it, quality to it. And the reason I put quality of work up there is I would tell, like, it's so shocking how many websites I look at and the picture's been put up as the wrong file size or it's pixelated or it's soft and people notice that stuff um, and it will stop you getting work because if you're looking at 10 photographers for one job and three of them have got pixelated work on their website then you just think well you know that's an easy way to get rid of them um, so be careful on that um, sections within websites now I put this up here because I know often people ask questions about should we have a still life section, a portrait section, a landscape section. Um, it's so, I don't know, people like different things. I don't really love having sections on websites, I don't have them on my website. Um, but a lot of my photographers have them on their websites and it works quite nicely for them. Um, it's up to you. If it makes sense for you to put a food section on your website and then a product section, then do that. Um, but it's really dependent on your style of work. Um, and then balance of work, we talked about this last week, was personal versus commissioned. On websites, I think it's key to have both things. Um, if you've got commissioned work, then definitely put it up there. I think it's nice to keep them separate, um, like a personal portfolio of work, which really shows you off as a photographer and how you choose to shoot your own work is really important. Um, and then the commissioned um, just shows how, how you're able to be applied from your actual portfolio to a, a paid job. Um, the edit of the work, now, this is something that I say over and over and over again to photographers, just edit it. You know, the best thing to do is to have a less work and um, it be the best work, then weaken it with, with sort of having 10 great images and then five mediocre images, because it just brings the quality down. Um, now, when we'll talk about this next week when we're talking about sort of the specifics of trying to get an agent. Um, but it's okay to have a smaller amount on the website, but offer up a wider selection to people. We do it all the time in meetings. I'll say, oh, you think that photographer is good for that, but you want to see more of this? I can send you through a PDF. And actually what it does is it means that you can control the quality of the um, presentation of your work. But if someone wants to see 10 ketchup bottles that you photograph, then you can also show them that. Um, and then I've put contact information links on here, which you'll think is completely stupid of me to put up there for you. Um, but so many people have these fancy sections which say, fill in your name here and I'll like, and your email here and then we'll get in touch. But just don't bother, just have your email address because actually I, it really turns me off um, getting in touch with someone because I don't want to fill in the boxes, I just want to send them an email. So make sure that you have your telephone number and your email on there and get rid of anything fancy. Um, so on to the printed portfolio. I know we're tight for time, but this is really key. Um, you should have a printed portfolio. It is more expensive than um, a website. Well, it's not more expensive than a website, but it is another expense on top of a website, having a printed portfolio. Um, but in the end, most photographers are working in a way that their work will end up printed, whether that's on a poster or on a, um, in a magazine. So it's really important to understand how your work looks when it is printed and other people to understand that too. Now, there's a lot of agents who I know, particularly in Europe, there not so many agents who have got printed portfolios. I'm seeing that they're mostly having them on iPad. Um, it's okay, but I don't think it substitutes the printer portfolio. Um, and also it just allows you to have a place where you can really feel proud of your work once it's there and it's beautifully done and in its sort of case. Um, one thing that 
I often say to new photographers is when people print portfolios, you're often tweaking the images which sit next to each other so that they sit well. So you're trying to create an edit of a portfolio and you're going, okay, there's 30 images and I want them to sit seamlessly together. That doesn't just happen by putting them together. Um, it's a sort of method of okay, a clever edit and trying to work out how they work nicely together, but going through and retweaking the files so that if there's a green in a bottle top on one side and then the green of a tree on the other side, you know, you can pull those greens just so that they sit well together. Either they can become the same one or one can go much blue and one can go much more yellow so that it just feel seamless throughout it because those tiny little bits of thought and effort are the bits that will make you stand out as a photographer um, but should be completely not apparent to anyone else who's looking at it and um, so that's sort of like your secret then um social media now we're all talking about social media all the time um it, as a photographer, we ha you have to be part of Instagram. It's just so key now. And if anyone's not part of Instagram, then they really, really should be. Um, it's the perfect platform for us. I love it. I don't love computers, actually. I'm not a huge techie person. Um, but I absolutely love Instagram because it's just visual. And that's what our world is. So, you know, definitely doing that. And then I've put up um, all the other... Um, platforms that I'm using. And actually I haven't put Vimeo on here because we use Vimeo too. It's really hard um, to try and keep up with all of that stuff. But at the same time, it's crucial because everyone else is doing it. And you also have to pick and choose the bits that work for you. Um, so do that. Oh, I've also noticed I haven't put Facebook. Um, then balance of personal versus professional. <laughs> the photographers I represent, we're always laughing about this because it's. I like to have the company. I have a Ren Instagram account, um, which I use like a bit like a gallery, and it's very slick. And I consider how we put our posts up, and you know, it's just very, very um, graphic and just image focused. Um, but then I have my personal Instagram, which is my Jennifer Turner one, um, which can have me and my friends, but it can also have work and it can also have like, you know, behind the scenes of shoots and that sort of thing. And that's a conscious decision that I made. Um, as a photographer, it's slightly hard because you have a life, but you also are a photographer as your profession. Um, and it's that balance that's kind of hard to get to. And I think the um, in terms of the in terms of different ways to do that there's some people who have like a um like a personal one so there's i think nick meek he has a nick meek photography one and then he has a nick meek as himself and there's like you know they, they can have separate different profiles um or you can just try and keep a sort of balance on it one of my photographers, um, Felicity McCabe, she has lots of pictures of her dog on her Instagram, but a lot of the pictures she's taken really nicely as well. So we kind of have a, a joke about that. Um, and then quality over quantity. Now, again, going back to that can be on posts, but it also can be on followers. So there's this huge thing about how many followers um, can does someone have and actually people are influenced by it in terms of commissions I had something the other day saying well how many followers does that photographer have because if we're going to do a social media campaign we want to know that it's going to go out to a large following um, that's good for those kind of briefs where they go yeah we want to see that you've got 10,000 followers but in the end you want to have I'd rather have a thousand followers who were industry people than um, 10,000 who were 100 industry people and the rest of them like girls who fancied the celebrities that we photographed or something um so you know just be aware of that too um and then networks and PR now once you've got your website together, you've got your portfolio, you've got your social media um, profiles, and then you've got your work and you're sort of confident that you've got this sort of good presentation of who you are as a photographer. The next most important thing is your networking. 
um, who can support you in getting it out there. Now, I've just made a list here of the um, the key people that we have in London. There's more, and it depends what your market is to, as to who's going to be more relevant to you. These guys are most relevant to my photographers at the moment, um, and they they're just crucial relationships to have. So I spend a lot of time working with the people there and some of them I'm not even in yet. I've still, I've not got into a campaign yet, but um, I'm maybe not afraid to boom. But the rest of them, it's just sort of like working and saying, right, how can I get my photographers on these platforms? Because all of a sudden I might have people looking at my website, sort of a hundred people looking at the website a day or something like that. And you go, right, okay, but Creative Review have 10,000 people looking at theirs. So if they can put something up on theirs, then all of a sudden your work gets seen um, more and more. So talking about relationships and sort of how you do those sort of things, um, how you get your work seen, these guys are going to be really, really key. Um, so you'll have to identify who those people are to you in the areas that you're working in and try and establish those relationships and get in touch with them and work out how to get in touch with those people um okay so client base we're almost done guys um client base recognizing who to talk to so this was a question that came up last week um that i wanted to build into this evening um when you're a photographer who's not got an agent the it's sort of it's not quite as clear as this but for the purpose of this your client base works out as photographic agents if you're trying to get an agent um, your commercial clients so the brands that you're trying to work with the advertising agencies the production companies who are also doing commissioning and um, the branding agencies the design agencies so those people and then you've got your editorial clients and your network so the people that i was just talking about in terms of the creative reviews and the dnads and those people I see them as much of a client as I do my commercial clients and going right, okay, they can bring us work through our commercial clients once they've reached us. So, you know, they're the three areas that if, it, if I was you and looking at how I spend my time reaching out to clients, I'd go about, right, hey, one day of the week, I'm going to talk to a photographic agent. The next day, I'm going to talk to commercial clients the next day. Or you're working out ways of talking where you can talk to all of them at the same time. Um, so we'll talk, we'll talk about this again um, in terms of ways of reaching people next week. Um, but that is, I don't think there's anything, there's no wrong way of um, reaching clients. There's maybe turning up at their front doors maybe too far. Um, but if you're sending out cards, you're sending out emails and things that are topical. So like, for example, um, there's a recent, um lingerie brand that's just done a big campaign all to do with tights and legs and i've got a photographer who did an amazing story about mannequins who were um they were sort of synchronized swimmers and so we're going right okay let's definitely get in touch with them with that work because it will feel relevant to them and you immediately go right once i send that to that person they're going to appreciate it because it's it is relevant to them it's the stuff that they're looking at um so i think reaching um clients in the right way trying to send them relevant work not just any old work is always going to be um more successful and there's something i needed to look this up actually before um talking to you about it but there's some kind of rule and maybe i'll look it up and tell you about it next week about the the successful ways of reaching someone or getting a client on board is i think they have to get in touch with them five or six times in, in five different ways for them to actually commission you. I'm going to look up that and come back with that next week. Um, but one thing that is um, really interesting, I'll put this picture in for you, is um, the 80%, 20% rule of client relationships. So there's this huge thing in business, which is you will get 80% of your work from 20% of your clients. And this is why I say try and nurture the clients that you're identifying with that want to use you or need to use you um, because the people, your existing relationships with people are going to be the most fruitful. Again, it's 
there's exceptions to the rule but you know once you're nurturing a relationship if you've got that relationship with that person or you know you've identified that your style of photography would work really well for a brand that they've got then you know definitely keep on at that because there's no point in getting in touch with an ad agency who never commissioned the type of work that you've got if they're never picking up the phone and not ever replying to your emails then maybe it's because they're just never going to commission you and it's that sort of thing of learning okay once i've got in touch with them five times and they've still not got in touch maybe my time would be better off spending um so it's spending with the with the pea rather than the cabbage and going like okay who are the people who can um, get in touch with and then this is my last, last bit, and this is just a visual thing. I'm actually going to minimise, uh, hang on, go into slideshow. Um, so business plan. I'll, um, Jamal will send this through to you afterwards so that you've got these notes anyway. Uh -huh. But um, just to finish off, um, it's really important to have a business plan as a photographer, and I have them with my photographers on a six monthly basis, and then we have a yearly one, and then a five yearly one. And it's just going back and summarizing in terms of who you are as a business model and where your sort of longevity is and what you're going to be doing this time in 10 years' time and this time in 20 years' time, because that's how long a career is. So you sort of have to go across it. Um, and this is just a little snapshot from, and David will kill me for it, but it's a photographer that I represent. And he is um, in his late 50s and he's been working since his early 20s. And he has been successful um, throughout all of that time, actually. And um, he started off shooting still life, which is the biscuit with the legs coming through it. Um, when he was 28, he was. Um, he didn't win the BAFTAs, but he was nominated for the BAFTAs um, with a project called Cabbage, which is where that cabbage head is from. Um, he's then been working throughout the industry, and the picture of the five girls on the bottom left, he won the Taylor Wessing um, with last year, and then the very bottom image is from his recent project. And the reason I put that in there is because it sort of showed different types of success throughout the ages. And kind of going through and he's a complete example of looking at your work and reassessing it and re-evolving it so that you work with what works best and what doesn't work best um, and you know there's different photographers and this might be relevant to you it might not be relevant you might like his work or you might look at it and go oh it's awful um, but it's just an interesting overview of how someone can develop over that's the that I think that's over 30 years so, you know that's just um, that's my final. So, do you want to cool. yeah. go so, right? If anybody <laughs> has any um, questions, I think we have one question so far. Nobody else posted any. So, and we'll take questions for the next five or six minutes because we know this session has ran out a little bit long. There's a lot of good information though, so that's key. Um, so, this is a yeah, this is a question from Willie. He says, "Do you think you can hurt your career taking certain jobs?" There's lots of e-commerce work in Manchester. Do you think getting work in e-com stops you from getting work with bigger commercial clients? I'm not talking about displaying the e-com work on your book, just taking the work, period. Um, it, yeah, I think you can. Um, everyone understands that there is some e-com work out there that people can get, which means that they can get a bit more regular income when they're not waiting for the exciting jobs to come in. Um, so people can understand that. It's just really hard, especially, did you, did you say I was in Manchester? Yes. Um, it's a bit difficult when you're somewhere like Manchester because the community is quite small, so there won't be a huge amount of photographers. And if people know that you're shooting for e-com work, um, that's not going to necessarily do you any good because if they're going, right, OK, well, the e-com people pay pound a day for the work that you do and for a campaign you're saying oh yeah I want to be paid three thousand pound a day then that's where you get into a little bit of difficulty and you're right you don't have to show that work so that's one thing um but it, I think it is a risk but it's easier to say that than um than do it because you know it's good to have regular income so sorry that's a half Half question, half answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think there was another session that we, we, we had where somebody, it was actually a photographer, and, and 
he worked with, I think, Peter Lindbergh and a couple of other people. And he was like, even Peter Lindbergh takes jobs that he doesn't like um, oh. to to fund the, the projects that he does like. So I yeah. think that it's okay. Obviously, ultimately, it's a business. Every business out there does uh, projects to bring in revenue. And then there are other projects that, uh, you know, you like for the creative aspects of it when it comes to art. So I think that yeah, definitely take those projects if you, if you will make sure you will keep shooting. If you're not going to keep shooting and you don't take this project, then. <laughs> anyway, so you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you might as well take that project. Um, great question, Willie. Any other questions uh, for anybody currently watching? I think for myself, um, one specific question I just uh, wanted to kind of bring up was related to the uh, website aspect and then social media. So two questions there. So the first piece on the website, um, there are a lot of tools out there like Squarespace, and Wix, and kind of all these other platforms. Are any of your photographers using any of those and has it worked for them? Because obviously it can be expensive like you to build your own and get a developer or a designer. So are any of your photographers using those tools? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Although I don't know what they're called. Um, I know that Luke Stevenson uses one. I think it might be called Format. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. There's both. Uh, there's uh, Photo Shelter, Format, Carbon Made. Yeah, there's a yeah. bunch. But, okay, so that's cool. So one of your photographers uses Format. Awesome. And it works for him. And it it works for me, actually, as well. Because I often look at their websites. And if an, one of their websites isn't quite doing what it needs to do, I'll be the first person to say, come on, we need to change this, this and this. Um, and I actually think it's probably good to start off with one of those websites because you learn what it is that you want from a website and what you don't want from a website um, before you go and invest a load of money into one. Because, you know, on another side, one of my photographers did get one built and it doesn't really work in the way that we want it to work. It doesn't show the work off enough, the thumbnails are really, awkward and so we're going right okay let's get a few more jobs in so that we can pay for another um, website to be redone so if you've got a free platform that you can try on and then once you get some big jobs in and go right okay let's put some money into actually doing something then we can do that cool um, that's, business. that's good that sounded good okay so we actually have three questions that just popped up so these will be the final questions uh, because the session is running a little bit late um, and then we can hold off on my social media question, which wasn't really that big of an idea. So this is question. <laughs> this question from Ruth, and she says, "I'm a still life photographer, uh, still life slash fashion photographer, or still life fashion photographer and videographer, looking to build my work towards getting an agent this year. Is it possible to get some feedback on my work slash website?" Hmm. Ruth, I think um, due to time constraints, that could be tough, but maybe what we can do is set you up separately with Jen for a quick uh, over email thing instead of doing it on here just because we're running late. If Jen, that's cool with you. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. And um, if I don't answer like in the next two days, then um, don't hate me and just leave it. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and ask you before the next session. Okay. And Willie says, uh, when you as an agent take a take a new photographer on board, do you expect him or her to bring clients with them? Oh, this is really interesting. No, um, I don't. But one of the other agents I watched a thing of said the same a little while ago about um, being careful of people who want you to bring a client base, um, which it's, it's a really tough balance because if you're taking on an established photographer, you might need to know that they've got a client basis and how much work's going to come in. And then, like, for example, I've taken on a bigger photographer recently and I'm going to have to take on another member of staff to be able to manage the workload. And that's because he brings um, work with him. Um, so you're always trying to look at it on a business side of things, but you don't have to have um, clients because the agent should be able to see in you what they want to see to be able to pick it to new people and not rely on the work that you'll be bringing in. Got you. So yeah, and that was summed up. So you will find agents that are both ways. Some people will want you to have, and I guess you could say they're lazy, who knows, 
who will want you to have clients and then others won't like Jen and I think Josette that um, she mentioned. And then, okay, another quick final question. Same thing, which is, would love to take a look at the website. Yeah, so we'll try and set that up, Willie, um, to, see, to see what we can do there. Obviously, if everybody does it, it would be crazy, but since you guys are very active, that's cool. So yeah, so I think that's kind of um, all we have for today. So the next session is June 14th. So whoever's watching, feel free to make sure you watch this session and the one before, and uh, feel free to follow up with any questions for that session. Uh, so cool, Jen, thanks a lot. This was very robust, a lot of information. Um, and that was speed, like speed points, I'm like, right, okay. Yeah, no, it's cool, you have a lot to talk about, so it's great. So yeah, everybody tune in uh, June 14th for the next um, session. And you guys, and feel free to give us feedback in terms of visuals, if there was an audio delay, anything like that. We're always trying to make it better. Yeah, perfect. So all right, Jen, take it easy, and we'll be back in two weeks, everybody. Okay, bye.